Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast, inside the business, buzz, and brilliance of Black entrepreneurs. Here is your host, Dr. Francis Richards. Innovative Thinkers, episode number 354. Innovative Thinkers. Thank you for joining us as we elevate the Black Entrepreneur Experience by interviewing CEOs, thought leaders, innovative thinkers, and Black entrepreneurs across the globe. I'm your host, Dr. Francis Richards. Our next guest is a certified financial planner, supports small business owners with the mindset and runs online educational and networking events, a professional trained musician and composer, conductor, and own business club. Welcome, Paul Arnold. Thank you so much, Dr. Francis. It's a pleasure to be here and thanks for having me on your show. I've given our audience such a brief bio. Why don't you fill in the gaps and share with our audience what you want them to know about you and your business? Well, you know, it goes back quite a ways. I started probably been about 30 years in sales and marketing. And my first business was in the financial services. And I've ran a total of of five businesses in the financial services. And But my real passion for business got started when I bought a business club. It's a networking group here in Ottawa. And basically, it was an opportunity similar to like BNI or another you know networking club where you meet for breakfast with other business owners. And so I got to, to get to know a lot of our local successful business owners and learned a lot of valuable things from how they market and how they build a successful business. And what I did was I started interviewing a lot of these successful entrepreneurs and some that are even multi-millionaire, you know, very established entrepreneurs like W. Brett Wilson, Bruce Linton, uh, some local entrepreneurs and learn what the secrets of their success was in business. And then that inspired me to then write a book called Business Strategy Success Principles and basically want to create a blueprint of how business owners, whether you're a new business owner looking to start a new business or you're an established entrepreneur looking for some new ideas to elevate your business to the next level. And so that was uh, so that was a bit of two year project and published with Morgan James, and that's uh, basically I uh, got where we are today. I still run my uh, financial work in, in the financial services, and as well as do as as you mentioned, do some some events to promote entrepreneurs. I have one event called Adapt and Overcome, which is a strategy conference, and again with and that was influenced by the COVID pandemic when that. You know, looking for business owners looking to switch directions to pivot their business. So that inspired that uh, that event. So again, looking for ways. I, I'm passionate also for like yourself to support business owners and entrepreneurs. So I run a a, a social media. I have, I have a, a few Facebook groups and I have uh, Instagram and and some other social media where I'd like to promote uh, business owners, and entrepreneurs, and do a lot of mindset. Uh, inspire them to on their their journey and give them some some ideas and some some strategies as well to to help uh, grow and enjoy their business more. Speaking of the book, is there two or three points that you can pull out that was a central theme around success and what entrepreneurs said to you? Yeah, well, the first thing I I talk about in my book is basically the things not to do. So I go over the top five reasons why businesses fail. And I think that's just as important to know how to be successful is to not fall into any of those traps. So, so for example, I go, there's no need in the market. Nobody wants what you're selling. For example, there's not enough capital. Um, This is according to, by the way, 2018 Forbes Finance. Number three reason is not the right team that you don't have the the right complementary skill sets to build up your business. Sometimes it can be uh, number four, Fourth reason is competition. There may be too much competition. Maybe there's, uh, you know, in in the market that you're entering, that there's uh, some roadblocks there. And number five is price. So either you price your price point is too high, so that you don't get enough business, or it's too low that you can't turn a profit. So that's one of the key things I start off is okay. Here are the things not to do, and here's why businesses fail. I also talk about the know, like, and trust factor. So it's important. People need to know you. So that's all about your sales and marketing that they need to like you. So that's about building out your brand. That's a likable brand that people can feel comfortable in doing business. And the third factor is trust. So they want to see that you have the credibility factor and that you're someone who you know has some, some experience in that field. And 
so sometimes whether it's it's going to school and getting a you know an MBA or if it's just your own uh, even more valuable is, is experience you have you have ten years doing experience in doing what you do and uh, or you can take a similar path where you can also interview others to learn from other success and and figure it out your on your own but uh, yeah I think those are a few key things I also do have a chapter in my book be, you know inspired by the the pandemic about how to pivot your business and that's all about understanding, okay, who the, the key players are, who the stakeholders are, and understanding, okay, where your business is today, where you want to be, and then the, the path forward to get there. And also understanding risk. And that's a big thing that that I learned through through my experiences. You got to understand if you're going to be pivoting your business or if you're going to be changing your brand or you're going to be, you know, other, other, or starting a new business, you got to understand what all the risks are. So if you're investing a lot of capital, right? So, so I think that's a real important thing to that, um, that understanding if you're going to make changes, okay, what are the risks are, are to those changes if you have an established brand? So that's one thing that I also talk about in my book. And, and I, I also talk about some of the mistakes I made along the way too. And, and some of the business decisions, even like, I think it was probably about 15 years ago when I was starting up a music production company, didn't understand, you know, even sometimes, uh, and this was, uh, you know, electronic music festival and didn't understand kind of like some of the, the underground drug dealing that was going on. So understanding how to navigate around that process. And even, you know, more recently with, uh, you know, networking business too, and trying to grow too fast. And again, you know, learning from, so I want people to also learn from the, some of the mistakes I made to, so that they can see how to be successful. So yeah, those are a few, few key points. Um, I think also building relationships is very, very important. So I have one chapter on the, the five C's of establishing rapport. So if with a new, a new prospect, for example, so, you know, reaching the common ground, having a conversation that is mindful, uh, having some humor, so candid humor in there, showing that you care and, sh- you know, showing that uh, the person that you do have some interest in them. And even compliments can go a long way too, if you're trying to build rapport with someone. So, so these are, you know, I, I have about, you know, 20 different principles that I go over in the book and everything from sales, marketing, branding, to uh, building it your team. I have a section on what's your reason why. So I even talk about, you know, why are you, what's driving you in your business? What's, is it to create a better life for your family, for you and your family? Is it to go on that to vacation is to buy a nice car, whatever it is you want to have a, a establish why. And see, some people can even create a vision board to, to get a clear sense of, so they see that every day and can work towards that goal. Cause it's really, at the end of the day, it's all about your focus and all about your commitment. So staying focused and staying committed to that, that end goal. Speaking of why, why do you do what you do, Paul? Yeah, well, I, I guess to, for me, the I, I love about the entrepreneur world is that the flexibility to you know to make your own schedule, to work from home, and to uh, yeah to pursue your what your passions are. So it's you know whether you choose and nothing wrong with going the nine to five route too, but if you want to have a little bit more flexibility and and have a little bit more control of how you build your business, I think that's what always attracted me to the entrepreneur world, or even sales too, where you get to control your schedule and it's all about what you put into it is what you get in return too. So so the more work you put into it, the more rewards that you'll receive in the end. So I think that's that's also uh, important, but. Yeah, for me, it's it's all about having that flexibility as the entrepreneur to, and also to, you know, to, there's not really an, a ceiling to what you can achieve in business as well. So I think that's why I went that, that route rather than sort of the, the more the nine to five type, uh, type job. So I would say that's, uh, that's what was driven me. And also I, being, a, you know, more of a creative type too, I like to, uh, even when I'm, for example, designing a logo or, or coming up with a brand, you know, I like to have some input, some creative input in that. So that's another reason why I I enjoy doing, you know, projects and uh, promoting events and even, you know, working to, to create promotional material, you know, create a logo and working with others and sharing ideas. So, so I've always enjoyed like those big projects that, you know, where where you can work with a team and, and work towards a, a goal that will ultimately bring success. If someone is interested in purchasing the book, how can they find the book? Oh, thanks very much for, so this is the book right here, Business Strategy Success Principles. It is available through Amazon uh, is where, you know, a lot of people get it, but you can also get it through Barnes and Noble in the U.S. and in Canada, it's Chapters Indigo. It's also available at Target. So we do do have the the, uh, distribution through Target. 
and there's some international uh, distributions through Morgan James. So that's the other, the last resort. If you're not in Canada or US, you could just look up Morgan James and because they have international distribution. But those are the main uh, distributors. You can also get directly through myself and my um, social media is a business strategy principles. So you can also uh, reach out to me and I can certainly arrange to get a book out to you and uh, cover the shipping costs as well. So so those are the the, the main ways that, that most people will or those and uh, probably Amazon is I think the quickest way to get get a, get yourself a copy and it's also available as an ebook so you can also uh, download a, an ebook as well. Fill in the blank. Thank you, pandemic, because that's a great question because I appreciate the pandemic because it did challenge you know entrepreneurs and business owners and it was actually the inspiration for that event that I hosted. So. A couple months after the pandemic hit, I reached out to a bunch of business owners. I said, you know, let's arrange an event that we can get together, share ideas. And it was right from, you know, from A to Z. So right started off on like, we had some health and wellness experts. We had some sales and marketing experts. We had some people that knew a lot about, you know, the economy, about business consulting and even, you know, real estate and investing. So right from, okay, what are the challenges are, how we can help each other, how we can help ourselves, you know, how we can deal through the mindset, what has changed, what what challenges do we have? And it was pretty substantial, like for business owners being, you know, when we had that economic shutdown. So that was the inspiration for Adapt and Overcome. And that's an event that an annual event that I put on. And it's, we bring together a bunch of business owners, usually have a keynote speaker and share ideas. And, you know, what are the opportunities? What are the challenges? How can we benefit from that? And ultimately, it's a, that also inspired me to study business change and change management. So I actually got certified as a business analyst to really understand how that process works and even got into studying management consulting. And really, you know, that's what Fortune 500 companies, if they're pivoting their business, it's, it's like a step, a six step process on how they go about doing that. So that, that pandemic also inspired me to learn more about business change and how to navigate that whole process. And it's really, again, like understanding, okay, who are the key players out there? Who are the stakeholders? Okay, where am I, where am I now? Where do I want to be? And then I also put together a strategy matrix. So this is about, okay, here are my strengths. Here's what I'm not, here's what I'm not good in. Here's what I'm really strong in. Here's what's least profitable. Here's what's most profitable for my business. And it's basically a two by two matrix. And so For example, if there's something that you're not good at, but will be very profitable for your business, let's just say, say for example, a website can be really effective for certain businesses. So doing a website, okay, I'm not very good at them. So I'm going to outsource that, but I'm really strong at social media and it's, uh, you know, brings, you know, moderate publicity. So you can then, it helps you focus on what you should be focusing on and, and who you should bring on as part of your team. So if you're hiring virtual assistants or are others that you're bringing on, you want complementary skill sets. So the strategy matrix is a way to understand, okay, get focused on, okay, here's what I'm going to work on myself. Here's what I'm going to outsource other talent to. And here's what I'm, you know, if there's something that is not, you're not good at, it's not profitable for your business. Well, maybe that's something that I'm not going to focus on right now. So that's, that's just a matter of prioritizing what your, your strategies are. Talk about raising capital. How did you raise capital to start your business? Yeah. So in, in the financial services, I have worked for other firms. So there wasn't necessarily an upfront capital uh, for the, the business club. That was, I, that was for my own capital that I used for, for that. And I always advise, you know, try to, it's, it's best to really scale your business, but I, at the same time, I think it's, it's important to do it right at the get go. So, you know, for example, having, having a clear agreement purchase and sale agreement having, you know, especially if you're going to work with other partners or you're purchasing or selling your business. So I think it's important to get all the, you know, the T's crossed and I's dotted, so to speak. Uh, But yeah, that was uh, with, with my capital and to, to start that. But I, I do, I think it's important, you know, to understand who the key players are and really get feedback from your stakeholders. So in that scenario, I, I always want to get like, I'll, I'll set up a meeting to work with everyone and to get share everyone's ideas so that everyone's on the same common page. Because if you're taking over a business that's been there for 20 years, you want to make sure that, you you know, those key players are are happy. And especially if they're, they're they're someone who are going to have an impact on, on your business as well. So, 
so understanding who those key players are and, and in making sure you interview those stakeholders to understand what, what's important to them so that you can keep everyone happy because it's not just what's important to you because if you do only what you want to do, then you might turn other people off. So whether it's be someone who's like an investor in your business or just someone who's a stakeholder as part of your business, I think it's important to get that feedback. And so you have, uh, you have that common ground when you move forward with your business. Let's take a snapshot of the last 30 days. What was your biggest win? Yeah, well, I, you know, it's, it's interesting that you, you mentioned that I, I actually have been working on an MBA program. So I was actually, um, I think the, the, what stands out to me over the last 30 days was actually going, flying out to York in the UK and meeting some people, other people in the program. I got an opportunity to also just share my book as well with my fellow colleagues there. And uh, I just, it stands out because it was a really enjoyable trip. Unfortunately, the queen had passed away at that same time, but I was in a restaurant. Someone raised the glass to the queen at that time. And uh, obviously someone who's been around for so long and be sorely missed, you know, for seven years. And it really influenced, you know, the, the globe in terms of, you know, her leadership to, and, uh, and the way she acted. So I think that's, will be something we'll, we'll be sorely missed. And I was, uh, fortunate enough to be in the UK at the time. And they were starting to build up the security to prepare for the, the Queen's funeral for that moment. And of course, I've done some book signings and things as well, too, which have also helped. But for me, this is uh, you know all about promoting. And it's also great to be on your show today and every little bit, uh, you know, meet new people in the business and uh, go from, you know, because it's, it's all about connections and helping each other to be successful. How do you celebrate wins? Well, I would say... I like to celebrate with with the family. Um, so when when I reached a very successful point in in my last business, I basically took the the family out. I've, I have my wife and two daughters. We went out, took them out to dinner, and just uh, just have a nice little celebration, intimate celebration. And uh, and I think it's important to celebrate those wins because uh, you know when when they happen, you want to reward yourself, and especially if it's something that can is meaningful for your family too. So for me, uh, I also I was uh, a couple of years ago, achieved a certain landmark in my business too, and, and and took the family on a vacation to the Bahamas. So again, that was a really enjoyable trip for, we went there for a week and, and enjoyed the resort and the water and the beach and the, and the girls love the pool. So in the pool, jumping off the, the diving board and, and um, getting to, to, to know the culture there too. So that's, um, that's a couple of ways I like to celebrate the win is basically celebrate, bring the family and, and treat them to a special time. Paul, what problem exists in the world today that you would like to solve? Well, for me, one of the inspirations for writing the book was just to give all the tools, because if you're trying to start a new business and to know, okay, where do I go next? Okay, there's so many different ways you can go. So that's you know what inspired me to write this book is I wanted to give a tool for new entrepreneurs or even those who are more established to, okay, here's everything that you need to do in order to create a successful business. And here's the things not to do. So again, I starting, okay, here's the top five reasons why businesses fail, but here's, um, you know, important to get your clear vision and mission statement right from the beginning, because that's going to be your guiding overarching principle throughout and having a strong reason why, because, you know, it's, it's at saying, you know, 20% inspiration, 80% perspiration, right? So, so when you're going to go through those hard times, you got to have a strong reason why you're doing that. And that's going to keep you moving forward. So I'd say that was the number one thing was how I wanted to help business owners have a blueprint for creating and building their business and to, to make sure they do everything right. And, and the last section of the book is also some ideas for more established business owners. Okay. How to take your business to the next level. You feel like you've reached a stagnant point or you're not sure how to move ahead. Okay. Well, here's some strategies, you know, focusing your business on building out how your systems and your processes are, are working and just even enjoying your business, right? Focusing on the things that you really are passionate about, that you really enjoy, and then outsourcing the rest. Like, so building out your team. So the things that you don't enjoy, so maybe you don't like accounting or bookkeeping or, you know, website development, whatever those things are, then you can outsource. Or if you don't like sales, then you can build, you know, bring some people on your sales team. So that's what, I, what really drove me is, is providing that blueprint so that new entrepreneurs and can find, have a clear path forward on how to get to that goal. If you lost everything 
and you had to start a business today, what business would you start? What industry and why? Well, for me, I'm passionate about business strategy. So for me, starting a new business, it would be as a strategy coach and helping build out, helping other business owners, just guide them through that process. And and even using the principles in my book as a resource as well, that because I've been now trained as a business analyst, I can really help business owners understand that process and, and building it and building out those systems and those processes. And also another thing gone through in this process of writing the book and publishing, that's the other, th- you know, the other business that I would be building would be a book writing workshop. So helping other business owners write it, write a book and guiding them through the process right from the get-go and, you know, putting together the architecture for their book and, and what they're going to talk about in each of their, say, 10 chapters, uh, you know, so have, you know, three main points and, and also introduce story storylines into their books as well, which is makes it something more interesting to read. And that's what I tried to also include when I was writing my book. So those are a couple of things that I would, I would you know, develop, further develop would be the coaching and, and the book writing workshop. Are you doing the coaching now? I do have some business owners that I've been working with. We're not doing, having engaged full time. I do. I just started also my, um, back in the financial services after taking a leave from work was publishing the book. So right now I'm, I'm focusing on my financial services business right now, uh, doing that. So whereas, but what I like is more of a posting on my, my social media, my uh, Instagram account and, and helping inspire other business owners. Um, and also with with through the the principles of the book. So I'm I'm also posting on some uh, some magazines. There's a, a Brains magazine, which is a magazine out of Sweden. Brains with the spelled with a Z. So I post like a monthly blog through that that magazine. And so that's what I'm, I'm focused on right now is, is inspiring others and helping others and being a resource for for when they need that. But right now my my main focus is uh, is uh, building up my financial services business. And that's, uh, you know, to support the family. And, and uh, that's kind of what I, I focus on, on mainly right now. Speaking of inspiration, I want you to have a monologue. I want you to name this person, living or not. And this person has inspired you so much. What are you saying to that person? And who is the person? Well, that's a really good question. I think, and I think back of even when I was in high school, one of the the role models. He's not necessarily someone I. He just he's someone I admire, and that would be Jim Carrey because he's a, he's a comedian. But he's more than just a comedian, though. I in in a way that he's he's written uh, books, and if you hear him speak, he he he's aware of like global events and a lot of and very passionate about you know how we can improve things. And he tells his story with his relationship with his father, and his father had an accounting business that didn't that didn't succeed. And so he, his whole thing is, okay, do something that you enjoy because at the end of the day, if, you know, if you lose anything, at least it'll be something that you enjoy. So I take that as a, as a good role model for life is to do something you enjoy. So even if it doesn't work out, at least you'll be, have enjoyed the the ride rather than at the same time doing something you don't enjoy and then losing that. And then it's, it's uh, no time wasted. So as they say, so, so he was, he's someone that stands out to me as uh, someone I've, I would, always admire and, and, uh, and enjoy his, uh, his comedy as well. <laughs> Name a business or brand that's dominating that you admire and why? I would have to choose, and, and I know this is a global brand, but I attended, and I'll tell you the reason why, because I attended a, a branding workshop, a branding event, it was like, it was, sorry, a conference, I guess is better described as, and they had the graphic designer from Coca-Cola uh, doing a presentation there. And I was pretty amazed. I, I got a lot of insight from that. But even the logo, the wave itself is actually from two Coca-Cola bottles going in the opposite direction. But what impressed me is the history, the long history they have of building that brand and even having the Santa coming back and doing like a selfie of himself. And they even brought in some younger graphic designers who are doing more abstract images of the Coke brand. So it was really fascinating to learn about the history and, and then they even went through when they Coke was a sponsor of the world cups too, and how they designed the brand to go with, you know, inspired by whatever country was hosting that world cup that year. I came to really admire that. Plus my wife is a big fan of, she, she drinks diet Coke. Like that's her favorite drink. So I have a lot around the house and, I know that's a, more of a global brand, but uh, I would say that's what I'm And of course, uh, 
you know, Warren being the financial services, that's one of the, the early companies that Warren Buffett had purchased as well too, that, that uh, made him such, you know, one of the, the keys that made him so successful in business. And it's such a powerful brand, you know, that Coca-Cola, that's one of you know globally recognized brands. So I think that would be the one I would lean towards for branding goes. Talk about your music, the inspiration behind that and how your worlds, how they collide or mesh together, financial services, music, author, father, husband, take it away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was my first passion. And right when I was uh, seven years old, I learned the piano and then I, then I just I was a big fan of Guns N' Roses when they came out. So I picked up the guitar and I also was fortunate to have a string program at my elementary school. So I picked up, learned the cello. And so, yeah. And then I actually, I studied music in school. So I actually studied composition. And so I got to write music for orchestras and for string quartets and wind uh, trios. And, and I also studied conducting. So, so I had an opportunity to, you know, to conduct some very talented orchestras and some community groups, community orchestras around uh, my local community here and, and also some choirs. I worked with some local choirs and, and I started one at a, a university too. And, and I composed music for the orchestra and the choir as well. And really enjoyed that, that process, but at this, and I, and I taught uh, private guitar lessons for several years as well. And, but, to, but it was difficult to make a living doing that full time. So unless you're becoming a, a teacher, so that's why I decided, um, and I was always strong in numbers in going to school, like in math, and so I, that's why I decided to go into the financial services because I found it really interesting with even the stock market and, and working with all these variables. And when someone wants to retire and, uh, you know, making a certain amount of income and how to put this plan together. So that's kind of got what me, got me interested in the financial services was that uh, the financial planning part, like taking all those variables and, and it's like solving a puzzle. And uh, with, so, and then of course, yeah. So, Nowadays, as far as music goes, it's more of a hobby. So I play for my local church here in Ottawa and I play piano and guitar on Sundays. So that's pretty much what I, my, I'm still keeping up with the music. I'm not doing as much with uh, the ensembles because I'm you know, busy with, uh, with the, the book release and uh, doing my MBA and also with, with my financial services. Of course, you know, the family is your number one priority too. So you know, and, and we of course see them every day and I'm coaching my, my daughter's soccer team as well. So, so it's, 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 it's a matter of balance and uh, prioritizing, you know, how you want to spend your time. Of course, I see the family and, and my extended family, like parents and sister, they live about two and a half hours away. So we always go down there for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and all the, the main holidays there. And um, so we stay, stay in touch there, but yeah, it's, it's important to, uh, you know, and I find that, you know, obviously that recharges your batteries and, and keeps you grounded. You know, your family is, uh, is, is, I would say my, you know, number one priority and uh, it's there for, um, to, you know, as we were talking about your, your why principle, right. And that's really can be your why is, is providing a better life for your family. Uh, so to me, that's, uh, that, that's really important. So I hope that uh, sort of ties it together <laughs> in some way. Talk about legacy. When it's all said and done, how do you want to be remembered, Paul? Well, my motto is that I use is own your truth and live your dream. So what that's about is, is being authentic to yourself and really listening to what you're passionate about, what matters to you and trying to follow that passion in life. And we, we don't always not, we don't always have the opportunity to do exactly what we want to do, but as long as you, you know, stay true to that and, and spend your time to do what you love. So, you know, that's about owning your truth and, and then living your dream too, is that, you know, if you have the opportunity to become an entrepreneur and especially if you can be successful to give your family a better life, then I, I think there's nothing more you could ask for than, you know, doing what you love and enjoying your life because then you, you don't have any ceilings there. You can pursue your passion. And then it's, it's the greatest thing when, you know, when you can, your work is, if you never have to retire, right, that's the ideal scenario. So you, you create a life where you don't have to retire from and if you enjoy what you do. And, you know, that's the ideal road there is, is creating your business to, uh, you know, to reach out. Not to say that you can do, uh, you know, a nine to five type job and really enjoy what you're doing as well. But I think uh, as much as you can to stay true to yourself and, and then you'll enjoy life so much more. And that's really the motto of my book is an actual plan to grow your business and enjoy an easier life. So that's what I talk about is, is uh, 
focusing on the things you love in your business. And that way you're, you'll enjoy it so much more. Advice you wish you had followed. Advice I wish I had followed. Well, I, I talked earlier about understanding what the risk is. So to me that, and that's one thing that I, I learned more when I studied business analysis is the risk of change in your business. So in one of the, and I talk about this in my book as well, like one of the mistakes I made was I tried to rebrand a business too fast and ended up stepping on some other people's toes. And what, what I think is the ideal scenario, especially if you're taking over a business is give it time for, you know, to be adjusted. And sometimes that can be a multi, multiple year uh, time for people to get adjusted to you and, and before you, you know, start rebranding or making changes. And I was also trying to grow the business, you know, too fast and end up, as I said, stepping on some toes of some other people. And some of those toes were some key stakeholders in the business, which I didn't re- realize initially. So, so yeah, it's, um, I say it's about understanding the risk of change and making sure that you have a systematic process in order to do so. So again, I, I outline that in my book on how to pivot your business effectively. And that's, you know, first planning out your plan, understanding those stakeholders, understanding, you know, where you are today, where you want to be and what the risk is, and then having a clear strategy in order to make those changes. So, so that's, a, you know, one thing that I think is important to, uh, to, to do. And I wish I knew more about before I, I bought a, a networking business is understanding the risk of that change being made. What is your biggest takeaway from our conversation today? What do you want our audience to leave with? Well, I think for me, it's primarily understanding, you know, some effective strategies some tools in order to grow your business effectively. Of course, you know, the best way to do that, to understand those, to read more about that would be to check out a copy of the book, Business Strategy Success Principles. Again, available through Amazon and Barnes & Noble and Target as well there. and so I, I would say it's to understand what those principles are, focusing on, you know, what's important to you, having a strong reason why, and ultimately, you know, building out that dream business and taking your business to the next level. So again, I, I review that in the book, Business Strategy Success Principles, give you a lot of tools there, some key principles in order to do so. And I try to cover pretty much everything that you need to know, but also share some mis- mistakes I made. So I guess that would be the key takeaway from today is uh, to, to check out a copy of Business Strategy Success Principles. Talk about oh. mental wellness and entrepreneurship. Yeah, well, that's a huge, uh, a huge question, and and you know, even for myself, and I think uh, you know, mental illness is something that a lot of entrepreneurs deal with because it is like a roller coaster ride. You know, I've experienced that. My I've dealt with mental health issues myself too, and and so you know, it's important to, and I think that's a first step as a business owner is to make sure you look after yourself. Because if you are struggling, it's going to be difficult for you to, you know, to build out that, that business. So whether it's taking medication or whether it's exercise or eating right or, you know, studying meditation or going to the gym, whatever it is, or nutrition, you know, you have to take care of yourself first. And because then you can, can reach that higher vibration in life. And then if you want to inspire others, you want to build out your team, you want to grow a business. I mean, it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of energy to do so. So I think that number one is to look after yourself. And once you look after yourself, then you put yourself in that, that mindset to be able to grow your business. And if you are struggling, you know, we we all go through those difficult times. And sometimes that can be ideal time to, to reflect and to, you know, study more about what's going in the market, maybe take a, a online course and maybe, you know, maybe you need to peer just to take a step back for, you know, for a period of time as you, you know, as you, uh, build yourself up again. And, um, but it's, it is an ongoing struggle. And of course, you know, having a good uh, network to, to reach it, whether it's friends or family, some people that are close to you to be able to reach out to, I think is, is important asset as well. And that, cause you always want to have someone to talk to. And if you are struggling, then there's, there's someone, you know, you have your family and, and your close friends who care about you and can help you through that. So, but yeah, I think that's the number one thing is to look after yourself and, and, uh, you know, if you need help with that, then there are tools that, that you can, you can, that are available to help you. What does self-care look like for Paul? Yes, yeah, self-care. I did actually sign up this past summer with a personal trainer to, to put together an exercise regime. So I was actually going to the gym uh, three or four times a week over the summertime. And I did find that made a difference in, in lifting weights. And I also 
started taking some vitamins as well that um, that are are important for your health and wellness. Like for example, vitamin D, uh, you know, which natural thing that we get from the sun, and or magnesium and some other some other vitamins that are that are important. And uh, also nutrition. So I'd also focus on understanding, you know, what, what I'm eating. And cause I was, I, I was, I certainly gained some weight and, you know, in my being in my mid forties, I, you know, you reach a point where you, your body changes. And so it's understanding, okay, here's the calories I need to stay at a, a healthy weight. And I shouldn't, so understanding, you know, what you're eating and trying to eat a new, more nutritious diet. So I was often having smoothies in the morning and uh, eating healthier. So I, I would say that's what, what my overall health and wellness uh, looks like is, uh, is looking after the, your exercise. And I also play soccer too on uh, the recreational uh, soccer. And I, I do, do some running uh, too. And uh, I'll be taking the girls skiing this winter. So that's also nice too. If you can get some fresh air, get out in nature, enjoy life that way, I think is important as well. What do you need right now that you don't have to move the needle forward? Well, if I could win the lottery, that would always always help. <laughs> I think it's I was enjoying meeting new people and building up relationships. And I think um, you know, I have I have my, you know, the family, but um it's um that's I mean, that's a great question. I would say just building, you know, meeting new people and and finding new avenues and and uh exploring new networks. I'm also a member of Toastmasters, so I meet a lot of people through through Toastmasters International, and that's helped also on my personal development on both on leadership and, and speaking has really helped. So I think personal development is something I'm always interested in. And so I'll, I'll always be taking courses and trying to always improve myself and whether that be in public speaking or in business or in on, on health, I'm, you know, always looking for, for guidance there. And I, I think it's never too late to get a coach or to learn new things. So I think I'll be a, you know, a, a student for life so to speak, because there's always new things to learn and, and to improve yourself. So I would say uh, personal development would be number one for me. Paul, if you conducted this interview, what is the one question you would have asked yourself? I want you to ask the question and answer it. Okay. So I would say three truths that I've learned from business. So one is um, there's always going to be challenges to overcome. So just expect that those are, they're going to be obstacles in front of you. Focus and consistency are what are going to bring you success. So those two things are on focus and being consistent. So not only always be laser focused, but always be cons- continually doing those year over year and do what you want that you enjoy the most and delegate the rest. So as you build out your team, just to enjoy your business more, you want to do the things that you're passionate about, right? So whether that be networking or social media, or, or some people, it might be in sales. Some people might even enjoy numbers, whatever it is that you enjoy in your business, you know, focus on that and then outsource the rest to your team. And that way you'll enjoy your business more. And if you enjoy your business more, you'll be more successful too, because people will see you being happier and a better mindset and, and will want to do business with you more as well. So I would say those were, were three truths that I've learned in, in business. We've come to the part of our interview. It's called the rapid round of fun. I'm going to ask you a series of questions that I'd like you to give me very quick answers. If there's something you desire not to answer, feel free to say pass. Are you ready for the rapid round of fun? Okay, I'll do I'll do my best here. Your ideal car. Oh, uh, I'd say BMW. Your first job. I was a paper boy. Your favorite holiday. Bahamas for sure. What food you eat every week, no matter what? I'm a big fan of mini wheats in the morning (laughs) for breakfast. You relax doing what? I would typically watch uh, a comedy or on on Crave or on on Netflix. The last movie you saw? That would be The Northman when I was on uh, the plane flying back from, from England. Your favorite singer or rapper? I'd have to say, being a classically trained musician, I do like uh, Andrea Bocelli, or, but I also enjoy Nat King Cole, as I, I find he has a very soft jazz voice too. So there's a couple of jazz singers that are, a couple of singers that are memorable to me. Your favorite dance song? I would say I'm a fan of Dua Lipa. So there's a couple of songs, uh, Don't Start Now or Cold, Cold Heart, Elton John too, that I really enjoy. Workout or Hit the Couch? 
for me, it's a workout during the summer and hit the couch during the winter time. <laughs> Paul Arnold, thank you so much for joining us on Block Entrepreneur Experience Podcast. Before we let you go, share with our audience the best way for them to connect with you, to do business with you. Feel free to leave all your social media handles and share again how they could purchase your book. Yes, you can reach me uh, through Business Strategy Principles, and that's through Instagram, through Facebook, through YouTube. I have a lot of YouTube interviews there as well. And also my website is, is uh, businessstrategyprinciples.com. And my book is available through Amazon, through Barnes & Noble and Target. And in Canada, it's Indigo and Chapters. So you can, and it's also available as an ebook. So you can also get electronic copy as well. And it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Dr. Francis. It's been a pleasure being on your show today. And thanks for this great opportunity. Thank you, Paul. That's a wrap. Thank you for listening and subscribing to Black Entrepreneur Experience. We would love for you to leave a review and rating on iTunes and share with your friends. For show notes and more episodes, go to www.beepodcast.com. Join us next Wednesday. And remember, green is the new black. So keep your bank accounts and your business in the black.